Hello, and welcome to a TMMI video presentation. Today we'll be covering the Red Lion Crimson 3.0 software. Our objectives today will be to open a Red Lion Crimson 3.0 software and create a new project. Apply communications to a GEIP Ethernet capable controller. Map some data tags to the GEIP controller internal variables. Add those data tags to a display page for viewing. And then download to the Red Lion Crimson 3.0 capable device. In order to do this, we have some assumptions. The first of which is that you have installed the Crimson 3.0 software for free from Red Lion's website at www.redlion.net. The next would be that you have a basic knowledge of the GEIP controller variable addressing. In addition, we are going to assume today that we are working with a GEIP controller and a Red Lion device that are on the 192.168.1.1 network. So it would be on the 192.168.1 network. We're also assuming that you are connected to your Red Lion Crimson 3.0 capable device via USB cable for downloading. In order to get started, we will first want to open up the Red Lion Crimson 3.0 software. In order to do so, you'll want to locate the Crimson software by going to your Red Lion Controls folder on your Start menu and opening up the Crimson 3.0. Side note here is that, as you can see, the older Crimson 2.0 predecessor software can be installed and work simultaneously on the same computer or PC as the Crimson 3.0 software. In addition, you can locate a Crimson 3.0 shortcut to open up the software as well. Once you have located the Crimson 3.0 software, you can then open it. Once you've done so, the first step would be to create a new project. As you can see, the default device that you're working with is going to be located next to an untitled file until you save the file. I previously was working with a G15 device and that is what I'm going to be working with today. However, if I did want to change this and was working with a different device, Crimson 3.0 device, I could go to File, New and select that device that I was working with at the time. For example, if I wanted to work with Red Lion's modular controller, instead, I could come down and select that and hit OK. It would change the model number up above. If you forget and start working on your project, you can also go into and do a save conversion, which will convert the files from one product to another. Today I'm working with a G15, so I will go ahead and leave the G15 selection up above. I'll then go and do a file save or press my save button on my toolbar up above to save this off as a particular program name. Which will then highlight up above next to your model number. The next step in order to program a G15 to communicate to a GEIP controller would be to go into my communication section within my navigation pane. Your navigation pane is going to be where you navigate to your different programming sections and environments. You may have these shrunk down to smaller icons but they're still going to be down in the lower portion of the navigator. The middle space is going to be your working 
or editing window and on the right hand side is your resource pane where you're going to be dragging and dropping from to make editing easier. We're going to start in the communication section to connect and communicate to a GEIP controller. The first thing we needed to go do is to set the IP address for the Red Lion device, in this case the G15. In order to do that, we'll want to click on Networks. The Network section allows me to set either one or up to two Ethernet ports, depending on whether my model has two Ethernet ports built in or I've added a communication additional Ethernet port. You can have up to two Ethernet ports on any device. In this case, I'm working with one Ethernet port, so I'll click on Ethernet 1, and I will want to manually configure this to be on the same network as my GEIP controller. As previously stated, my GEIP controller and Redline device will all be on the 192.168.1 network. We will assume that the GE controller is at a 192.168.1.2 address, so we can plug the red line at a 192.168.1.3 address, something different and available on the network. I'm going to leave my network mast set to 255.255.255.0. And in this case, I'm not working with, nor do I have a gateway. But if I did, I would plug that in here. At this point, you'll as soon as you download this program to your Red Lion device, in my case of G15, this IP address is what that Ethernet port would be set to on that Red Lion G15. The next step then would be to identify and communicate to the GE IP controller externally. For this, I will click on the protocol 1. From here, I'll want to go to my driver selection in my workspace window and pick under manufacturers my GE driver. As you can see, the GE driver listed here for those familiar is GE's proprietary Ethernet protocol, SRTP. I'll go ahead and select that. Once I do that, that is the protocol associated and tied to protocol 1. You'll notice that a PLC2 generically adds underneath. I can, from here, rename this, for example, to be GEIP, so that I know that's my GE controller. If I click on that PLC or GEIP controller as I've renamed it, I then will go over to my device identification IP address and set this to be the IP address of that controller. As previously stated, the IP address of the GIP controller in this example will be 192.168.1.2. Everything else will remain the, sta the same and untouched. The default settings for every device driver that Red Lion works with are always set to the default states from that manufacturer. So you typically do, do not have to touch anything else in the protocol. From here, we want to go ahead and map some tags to this GE IP controller at this address. We'll click on our data tags section in order to do so. I'll go up to my new and add a numeric tag, which can either be an integer or a floating point value. And I'll go ahead and add a flag tag as well. Flag tag is going to be a single bit or Boolean value, one or zero, on or off. I can rename these tags to be anything I want. For example, I could right click on tag one and rename this to be my start speed. as a set point, and I could rename this flag tag to be my motor status.
in order to map this to the GE IP controller address that we're communicating to in the communication section, I'll click on either tag and go to the data tab in the editing window. Under data source, source, instead of being an in internal tag, which is what the blue indication means, internal to the Red Lion device only, I click on internal and select the item I want to communicate to. In my case, I only have one selection, which is the GEIP controller. If I had added more protocols in my communication section, I would see all of the controllers that were available to map to here. I click on GEIP controller, and again, as long as you are familiar with GEIP controllers, you will notice that the addressing here should look the same as what you would see in a GEIP controller of any sort. Percent %R, percent %AI, percent %AQ, percent %I, and so on. The percent sign is left off because of redundancy purposes. In this case, I'm going to map this start speed to a percent %R 56, let's say. Word for word would mean that it's an integer or word. If I did word for real, this would make this a floating point of some sort and would in fact bring over percent R56 and 57. I'm going to do word as word. It's a single integer value as a set point. The red indication now means that I can read and write to my percent R. 56 in this case within the GE controller. If I were to change this to a write only, it would remain red. And if I were to change this to a read only, this would change to be green. That's the color indication noted here. I'm going to leave this as a read and write capable tag, so I'll leave it as a red indication. The motor status then, I could come over and map through the same process for example, to a digital input of percent %i. In this case, let's say it's percent %i5. Notice that I do not have to put in the zeros for after. Um, it will automatically add for me right there. I am going to change the access here to read only because it is just going to be status, nothing that I want to feed back. You, know, you now have two tags that are mapped to a GE IP controller. From here, you can go to your display page section and actually add these to the screen for displaying purposes. You'll notice that because my screen that I'm using or product from Red Lion is a 15-inch screen, I will want to zoom in as I add the detail to the screen in order to see the appropriate resolution. My screen, my computer screen, is not large enough to view it accurately without zooming. So when I go add my data tags, I then want to use my resource pane. Instead of adding any um, details here, I want to just go down to my data tags section and just add the two tags that I have here. If I highlight them and hold my shift key down to highlight multiple, and then drag them both out. That allows me to select and drag out multiple tags at one time and space them, adjust them, move them together. If I do that, you'll notice that again my resolution makes those tags not look as pretty as they should and will on a G15. So perhaps I want to open up and increase the size of that um, display. I may also from here go into colors and change that color from being uh, white to maybe red, for example, if I wanted to do that. If I change one item, I can come in and match that item to the second one listed on the screen. In order to do that, all I would do is select the other item I want to match, right click, go to copy from. And in this case, I want to copy several things, so I'm going to go to Copy Selective, copy from this one, and I want to copy the text font 
and color and OK. So then it matches it quickly for me. From here, my motor status is a read only, but my start speed is a read or write. So I could, in fact, open up, go to data, and create a data entry field as well so that I could input a speed back to that percent R register in the GE controller. At this point, you have display and even feedback information back to a GE IP controller at the 192.168.1.2 address from our Red Lion device, G15, located at the 192.168.1.3 IP address. From here, in order to download to the screen and communicate now to your GE IP controller, you'd go under Link, go to Options first, and ensure that you have selected USB because, again, we are assuming you have a USB cable connected to your Crimson 3.0 capable device. You press OK. And then from here, you can either hit the lightning bolt on your toolbar here, which is an update. Update means that you are sending only the changes to the screen, versus if you go to link and send, this will delete everything on the Crimson 3.0 capable device and send the entire program. There's also update up here and you can also extract uh, files from a Redline device as well or match it with a verify. At this point I can do either because a update in my case will also be a send since it's a different program. Note that if you are sending a completely different program or a program for the first time or sending a different firmware update, this download may or may not take longer to accomplish. I now have on my screen my start speed and motor status displayed. And that concludes our video presentation. Your key takeaway from today's video should be the ability to open and create a project in a Redline Crimson 3.0 software. Being able to map data tags to a GIP controller. Utilizing a display page to view data on a Red Lion HMI or a virtual HMI device. Thank you for watching, and please join us again for another TMI video presentation.